Hello, everyone, and I am back. Good to see you. Um, yes, so I'm going to dive into Illustrator Fast 9 Challenges. That's right. That's right, Monica. It's been quick. Uh, our last one. I'm going to get a little choked up uh, since it is uh, my last one. Uh, but we've done quite a few. And uh, if you're joining me elsewhere, hop over to Behance. Basically, these are the fun challenges that we've been through. Our very daily creative challenge, we're on this last one where we're talking about landscapes. Which sounds like it's going to be a pain, it's going to be a lot of work. No, this is going to be easy and I think we'll uh, hopefully hit some really awesome results pretty quickly. So that's the goal. Carrie, welcome. Hello, Gregory. Hello, Joanne. Hey, hey, uh, Yvonne as well. Uh, good to have you here. So again, all about landscapes. Get started. Just grab that file, right? I'm giving you just like uh, just a quick graphic. Uh, to kind of draw from. So this is the file, as you can see right here. This is the one we're gonna use, Jennifer. And again, it's Button Up Friday, where we get dressed on Fridays nowadays, instead of casual Fridays. Uh, can a landscape be a logo? A logo can be a logo. <laughs> Um, yeah, a landscape could totally be a, a logo, especially if you're a landscape company, then yes, you can turn it into a logo. Okay, but uh, here's what I'm working with. Uh, I just dropped in this image. Notice that over here in my layers panel, it's just a JPEG that I've embedded and I've just locked that layer. But again, just an example, we're gonna work on this layer, right? And we'll just start kind of like recreating this and then we're gonna take it to another level. All right, so that's the plan. Uh, first off, I'm gonna just come over here and just quite simply use the rectangle tool and kind of draw out a rectangle. So I'll kind of do it right next to it. Uh, if I hit I, I'm gonna select the eyedropper, okay? And then I can kind of sample that blue if I want to, okay? I'm gonna be using a lot of gradients. And by the way, we're gonna take this from night to day to night to all colors in between. So it's gonna be fun, uh, Steve. <laughs> Oh man, I got to take a look at that picture. Sorry, I'm, I can't right now. Um, so right in here, uh, I actually want to, I want to kind of replicate this uh, gradation as well. So I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to open up, you do this a couple different ways. I'm going to just going to have my gradient panel open. I'm going to use this a uh, fair amount today. So here's my gradient panel. It is open. I'm going to click this first one right here, linear gradient, bam. Now I can come in and I can sample say for instance, that blue, and I can go where it's white, and then I can sample sort of that, uh, that purple or something. So that's how I can kind of add those two colors, right? You're gonna be playing with these colors a lot. The key thing is we just wanna go from like dark to light, okay? So the colors don't matter that much. Uh, notice with my, um, with my, right over here, my gradient tool selected, I can come in and just kind of draw out a line, uh, again, from light to dark, right? So the sun is like, it just went down or it's just about to come up, you know? But it's gonna be darker uh, at the top part right there, okay? So I could always save this gradient over here in my swatches panel, click new swatch, Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> New swatch, and there's my gradient. Okay, so let's let's create. I want to impress you. That's my goal. If I can impress Michelle and Darius, uh, is a gradient a color? Uh, gradient, I guess, would be a combination of two colors. But yeah, I would consider a gradient. You know, technically, it's a combination of two colors. So uh, don't really call it a gradient, uh, a color though. So right over here, uh, I'm gonna start with that gradient. I'm gonna add, again, just replicating this. I'm gonna make that end white and it's gonna dive into the purple. So there's my nice moon, right? It's just made with the ellipse tool like so, okay? Now we're gonna get into all this fun stuff of creating this land, okay? Uh, the big yellow one's the sun. That's funny. Is my volume okay? I feel like sometimes it shoots up really high because I get excited. All right, so um, that looks good. We have that like so. Uh, I'm actually going to use the, if you know me, uh, the pencil tool. And I'm gonna start in the far background, clear back there, using the pencil tool. And in the past, I'd have you set it to smooth. So if you double click on the pencil tool, you get these options. Consider this, this is what we're doing. This is rolling hills is smooth, and then 
uh, jagged, detailed landscapes is down here where it says accurate. So I'm actually gonna drag that clear over to accurate, okay? And click okay. Uh, from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly kind of draw out just kind of like a mountain range back there. And the thing is I want it to capture all these little um, uh, like details. Uh, usually it'd be imperfections if I was making anything else, but it works for landscapes. And just kind of drag it around, reconnect it back up at the top. You could see all those points that it made, okay? From there, I can hit I for eyedropper. I can click on that background, and now I have this gradient, and I can kind of control how this goes, um, like so, kind of like that. There's my, again, kind of like my detailed mountain range. You can always, and this usually happens for me, is um, it gets to be almost like too mountainous and I wanna kinda even it out. I can grab this bottom part and just move that up a little bit and now we have that uh, way back there mountain range, right? We're gonna create more of them. We're gonna hit N for pencil. We're gonna do that again for say, for instance, this one right here that's gonna kinda come down from this side. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna just take this up a touch, like to the next notch for the pencil tool options. And then I'll go up and it'll be go, go down. It's like another mountain range type thing like that. And I'm just using my mouse, okay? Hit I, bam, 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 ba-da, like that. Creating this nice depth. You see what we're doing there? Oh, I'm sorry, Brajesh, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't get her cake because of quarantine. Well, she probably appreciates you staying home and you both being safe anyways, but I'm sorry about that. I'm, my neighbor just had a birthday the other day and I, we went outside his house and sang happy birthday to him. <laughs> um, let's do that again. Let's make it even smoother right in the middle, right? Let's do it maybe this other side. We're just having fun creating mountain ranges. Boom, boom, boom. It doesn't have to be hard, right? Life doesn't have to be hard, right? There it is, like that. Creating some nice depth. I think this is looking pretty cool. Um, let me know if you have questions. So how to use the gradient, Vicus, if you wanna know. So I'm gonna click right here. First off, let's open up the gradient panel. Window, gradients, bam, right there, here it is. Oops, I just closed it. Because <laughs> if you already have it open, selecting it will close it. Here's my gradient panel, there it is, right? It's going from purple to blue, okay? Notice how when I control this, it can become more, gra more drastic of a change. You also have uh, this gradation grid right here that I can drag and change that location. Or I could use the actual gradient tool and then just start drawing on the image, right? So this seems to do what I need, kind of like that. We're gonna play with this some more as well, by the way. We're gonna, we can throw in some uh, other gradients. So I'll keep that up for you, my friend. Uh, rolling hills really fast. There's one. Hit I to sample that gradient there. For each mountain range, you know, as we get to these hills in the foreground, there's gonna be more light on them. Um, but in order to make them stand out, uh, I have to have more of a drastic uh, change in depth. That probably didn't make any sense. Cause I really didn't know what I was saying. What was I even saying? What do I even mean? Okay, but right here, this is kind of what's happening. It's like, this moon is gonna splash more light over here than it is on some of these other mountain ranges. So I can reverse that gradient and make this one stand out a little bit more, especially against that dark uh, mountain range behind it, okay? So that's what we have. We're just having fun. Let me know if you have questions, super easy. Uh, oh, oh, poor, I'm sorry, Eric. Your birthday was last week on April Fools. Oh, so bummer. I'm sorry, my friend. I am. Sorry, I should have made a birthday present in Illustrator for you. Okay, so let's let's do some more fun things with this. You ready for this? Let's create some trees. We can create some trees by, as soon as my mouse connects, please mouse, please help me mouse. Okay, there we go. Uh, again, same thing. Um, by the way, I could use the pen tool if I want really nice rolling hills. Come in here, let's use the pen tool. Boom, boom, boom. Nice curves, right? We have something like that, okay? But let's throw some t trees in here because it looks awfully barren, okay? So I'm gonna select N for pencil. I'm gonna go back to the detailed end, the accurate end of this pencil tool options. Click okay. 
I'm just gonna create, I'm gonna create some trees, like a tree line, okay? Because remember, like right over here, there's a little bit of a tree line right there. Let's do that right over here. It doesn't really matter where it is just yet. Let's just kind of make some like trees, kind of like that. Yeah, be very exact. This is a very exact process. Yeah, make it very exact, right? There we are. Here we have our trees. They don't look like much yet, right? I get it. They look horrible. Uh, right? Well, I could play with some effects. And uh, again, thanks for ha so much, guys, for spending your day with me. Um, these trees, I can actually um, distort them a couple different ways. I can use distortion tools, but I want to go into effect and uh, I want to go into stylize because I really want to stylize this line and I want to scribble it. So I'm gonna make it look like tree branches by adding scribble right in here. I'm gonna make this go straight across, okay? As you can see, me making it go straight across, it's centered, it actually already looks pretty good. But again, you can go away from the line or closer to the line, and we'll bring that down just a touch. You can see the stroke width that we could play with. Wait for the scribbling, oh, and definitely make it pretty intense there. This is all I want. I just want a little bit of detail in there, right? I just want to kind of roughen up the edges and uh, just play with it a little. Clicking OK, there we have just kind of some rough trees, if you will, okay? That being said, I'll zoom out. I'll go to my Layers panel, and now this Layers panel gets to be pretty important, right? So I'll even pull out this Layers panel right in here. Check it out, what is selected is this top one. Guess what, I wanna drag it underneath uh, a couple of these, maybe the first two mountains, and I can put it there, okay? I can take this, I can copy, and I can paste, and make a, another mountain range behind that one by dragging that one even further back behind those mountains as well, okay? So that's what I'm doing, I'm just doing some duplication, cause hey, why not, I'm lazy, I don't know something like that, but we're basically giving this a little bit of life by adding some of these nice um, nice trees there. I'll do this one more time. Let's put one over here, actually. Make this a little larger, like that. Cool. All right, so there's our landscape. Checking the time, I still have 10 minutes. Insta trees. That's right. So super fun to work with. By the way, we're going to change this. I want to go over two more things. This is going to be awesome. You ready for this? Because you're thinking, oh, you just, I, I kind of made a little bit of four. I made three forests. Okay. And I could play with that all day long, but let's move this off. I really want some detailed trees right here. Okay. I could make them the same way we did, but that would be boring because I would be repeating myself. Plus, I'm also thinking there has to be trees in Illustrator somewhere, and sure enough, there is right down here. Symbol libraries. Okay, I'll go right up here too. Uh, so like a nature. Oh yeah, nature. Let's see what's in nature. Oh, nature is full of wondrous things, including all of these assets. I encourage you to add um, as many of these that you want to. So there's grass, there's a number of these. I'm gonna grab like this group of trees right down here. It's called trees one. And I'll just drop that in here. Now keep in mind, I just took this from the symbols panel, right? So it's connected back to that symbol, but I'm gonna break the link to that symbol in a second. <laughs> oh, Gregory, you're too kind. Bob Ross is my hero. He is the man. All right, so right up here, this is a symbol. Uh, I'm going to break link to the symbol just so I can edit it individually. And, uh, you know, that's what I want to do, right? Um, and then I'm actually going to hit I for the eyedropper because now I want to pick up those same colors. So I'm going to hit I for eyedropper. And then I'm going to sample this same gradient we've been using. Click and look how they've changed. It changed all those colors to those gradients. And I'd say this looks pretty nice for a day's work, right? From there, I can duplicate it just by holding down the, the option key and shift key and dragging it around, starting to play with, you know, these lovely trees. 
like that. Let's get these over here. Shrink them down. Move that over. Move it to the back. That's the idea. Cool. Can you make um, patterns out of symbols? I have not tried. So I'm sorry I don't know. Shame on me for not knowing. Um, you could have, you can definitely have patterns in symbols. I guess I don't see why not. Let's do a couple other things. You ready? You, you know, one thing that we learned, we learned brushes the other day. Let's do that. Let's go into brushes. Boom, boom, brushes, boom. Guess what? I have all those brushes that we worked with earlier in the week. And we have this fun scatter brush. That's just a star. I already made this for you because that was already a lesson. Now I'm just going to hit uh, N. Let's just draw a path. And you can see I'm generating stars, right, from that brush, which I think is pretty cool, right? Again, just making it quick. There's more I could do with it, but let's just give it some nice stars. For some of these, I might want to play with the, um, not the opacity, yeah, maybe the opacity a little bit, you know, like that. Maybe this stroke is a little larger, so those stars are larger, but I'm just adding stars uh, to the sky like so. <laughs> Uh, the size for a zoom background typically is 1920 by 1080. All right, I have nine minutes. How about clouds? Yeah, we could do clouds as well. I'm taking suggestions, apparently. Let's go in here. Let's throw a circle in there. Um, here's just a circle. Uh, I would draw out this a couple times, right? So we could do this. We could do something kind of like that. Um, I could select both of these. I could select all three of them if I want to right with all three selected and i'm i apologize let me change this change this a little bit just so we could see it there we go okay so that's all selected um i'd encourage you to use something like the shape builder tool selecting the shape builder i can combine these circles together like that but maybe keep this one here and it looks like it there's a little weird edge right there so i'm just going to do that again circle 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 you know taking all of these shape builder let's make them just one shape right maybe throw another circle over there being aware of the light should be coming from uh from that moon so this edge right here would actually have the highlight like so and by the way i can always play with that highlight maybe make it a little bit stronger as i just make it a little bit brighter, kind of like that. So I don't know, there's your clouds, uh, quick and easy. I wanted to get into one more thing too, that would be cool. Uh, let's just duplicate that and move it over, flip it. Oh, sorry, uh, bup, bup, and you, something like that. Okay, you got your clouds. Okay, two more things, and luckily I have time to do this. Yeah, we can add a UFO, huh? <laughs> Is that what we're doing? We add a UFO? Oh man, there we go. I'm just making these look a little bit different. All right. Um, one problem with this is these stars are really bright. I honestly would probably select most of these stars and take their opacity down by 50%, right? Because they're just a little bit too strong. Another thing I could do is actually change, instead of the opacity, changing this to overlay. And that's going to make it look nice. Another thing, as I started adding complexity, I probably want to uh, be more judicious with these layers. Like, I need to clean up my act. All those stars, let's cut all those out. Let's put those on a new layer. Heck, let's go right here. Let's add an entirely new layer right there. Let's grab this one, cut it. There we go. All my stars are now on a new layer and they're not gonna conflict with anything else. And for all these, I could select them all and say, hey, for all of them, make them overlay at 100% like that. And now we get that. Doesn't that look better? Do you guys see that? Doesn't that just like look better? Those stars like that? Uh, how do we add Spark in Illustrator? Good question. Good question. <laughs> All right, so let's do one more thing. Remember, this is a pro tip. Um, the sparkles, the stars was done brushes. Refer to my brushes uh, daily creative challenge. This is next level stuff. You ready for this? I'm going to lock down everything because it's going to be a pain. Let's click over. I'm going to create a new layer. 
a new stroke that happens to be white like this because I want to have some cool like just some cool bursts out of it. You ready for this? I'm going to take this to 100, right? This is set to 100. The um, opacity is set to overlay, or excuse me, the blend mode set to overlay. And I just think this is a cool tip. I'm going to take this up to, um, let's go 500, 500%, right? And check this out. I'm going to go into the stroke because I want these to be like light rays. I can change this to dashed line. Now that it's changed to dashed line, check that out. Let's do 40. Let's do 40, right? We get those awesome gaps. And uh, I all of a sudden made these cool rays, right? Isn't that kind of neat? We can take up the size to 800, stretch this out further like so, right? And now we have these cool like rays of light. Again, this is a pro tip. I like hopefully getting you excited. Um, I probably want to take this and expand appearance. I have to do that twice. Expand, expand, click OK. Now I can kind of play with the depth of these as well. But I just thought this was kind of cool. Um, I could play with the depth of this now by going in here and saying, hey, you know what? For these light rays, you know, don't have them cover up the trees. Like put them behind the first couple mountains, kind of like that. I thought that's kind of cool. So that's all I have for you. So fancy, that's right. Uh, taking this, I would probably definitely take this down from overlay to soft light. You know, maybe take down the opacity some as well. Last thing you're gonna do, by the way, once you get this set up the way you want, we can get rid of this example. We don't need it anymore, right? We have ours that we've made, right? It's looking gorgeous. Uh, what I wanna do now is play with the colors. So with everything selected, we'll go into edit, edit colors and recolor artwork. Bam. Showed this the other day. This is what I'd want to do is jump in here and start to play with different colors for this. So again, it's still a nighttime scene. Keep in mind, there's only two colors here. We could start to kind of brighten it up. As you can tell, uh, if I select this darker color, let's unlock it. Crank this up. Keep in mind, there's only two colors here, and I'm slowly kind of turning this into a daytime scene. That definitely needs some more work, right? I could still add more colors to it, uh, but again, we've just kind of given it a splash of color. Let's crank this over here, see what happens. Ooh, nice. I don't know, I just really like recolor artwork. <laughs> so that's all, fancy stuff. Uh, Thank you so much. Kind of winding down. Let me open up. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Let me open up this final one that I have. Um, right in here, if you don't mind. Let's open up this one. Spent a little bit more time on it. I was I played with the colors a lot more, and you know, there's this version. Now you see how all of this was made. Technically, with these trees, I did end up crafting them a little bit more carefully. Uh, cool, Monica. So anyways, that's kind of neat. I started playing with the depth right in here of those rays of light coming in front of and behind as well. Um, yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, that's it kind of getting down to... I'm missing the Groundhog Day image. Dang it. But anyways, this is what we have. Hopefully you had a fun day. Something like this. Darius, hopefully that works for you. Um, yeah. Just, it's, this one's an entirely different style. I went from the scribbled um, trees to crafting one and then just duplicating it a lot. Okay, but anyways... Austin, thank you so much. That's why I do it. It's just for if Austin learns something, then then we're doing well. Cause man, Austin knows everything. All right. So and lastly, you can see right here all the different versions 
of graphics that we've made. If I did this again, I would probably have more rhyme and reason to all the different lessons. I would probably cover symbols again. So remember, each daily creative challenge is different and uh, you're bound to learn something new. So again, it was fun for me. Hopefully it was fun for you. And uh, that is it for me. The birds are chirping, telling me to go outside, but that's also my alarm. So uh, in blue, it's also like the blue. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. By the way, I did a split image of that. I mean, it just turned out really cool, but here's the blue one. Actually, let's see what else I got. Oh, sorry. Boop. There we go. Trying different colors, right? You get the idea. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Oh, Greg, thank you so much, man. Glad you liked it. Vaughn, I really appreciate you. Vikas, I appreciate you as well. Have a beautiful day. I'll be online. Um posting some other things uh, that I was doing earlier today as well. So have a beautiful day. You have, if I'm not mistaken, the one and only HP Howard Pinsky up next for the Daily Creative. Oh, sorry. Adobe XD Masterclass with Howard Pinsky is up now. Thank you, Darius. Everybody have a beautiful day. Stay tuned for his amazing work. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Congratulate yourself if you did all of the... Uh, challenges to congratulations everybody have a beautiful day we will be in touch thanks so much